Hello, this is Mo, your urban amateur gardener from Houston, Texas. I realize I'm going to have to talk very loud because there's work going on in the neighborhood and it's kind of loud, so in order for you to hear me, i got to make sure I project my voice towards the camera and make sure I talk loud. <clears throat> this morning I'm working on a project. I'm filling these five ba half barrels, the plastic, full of, uh, you know, substance so that I can plant basil plants in them and then place the basil plants around the garden where I need the, to attract the bees. That's my new plan. Instead of planting basil in different places, I'm going to keep it in buckets and that way I can move it around and have more control about you know where I get the bees to flow. Um, these buckets had no holes in them. So, uh, I'm just going to take you the steps that I use and also a bucket that size can be very heavy if it's just full of soil and especially if you use rocks for drainage it really makes the bucket heavy and it's hard to move. Well I want it to be light enough so that I can move them around and I've done this before with other things that I have to bring in for the winter like uh, young citrus plants. I'll do the same technique so that it's easy for me to move the plants from outside into a, a designated room in the house uh, for uh, wintering over plants. Um, so, I drilled the holes because there's no holes in them. So uh, what I used was I used a half inch drill uh, for the holes on the bottom. And this, this is indented on the bottom so it, it has a place for a hole right in the middle. So I drilled the hole there. But because it's indented, you know, the water will settle here and it won't, uh, you know, uh, come out. So I didn't want to just drill holes on this indented part. So I drilled holes on the, the lowest part that touches the ground here, plus here. I drilled uh, five extra ones there, and then with this half inch drill. And then I took a slightly smaller drill and drilled four holes very close to the bottom so that that, that also helps the drainage, okay? Because you want really good drainage on plants. The quickest way to kill a plant is over watering. Okay, so so I got to several holes. Let me see, what is it? Five and four, nine holes on the bottom. And then I use a piece of, this is that um, ground clover cloth that's supposed to keep weeds from growing. I don't know about that. I found that this stuff almost works like a greenhouse on the weeds. But anyway, so it wasn't working, so I decided to use it for something else, and I cut it into squares so it's ready to use in any kind of potting situation. So what I do is I'll put this down to keep the soil to keep the soil from leaking out. Let me take my hat off. I'm in the shade, right? Okay. Keep the soil from leaking out. So I put that in the bottom first. Then next I put styrofoam. Any of that used styrofoam that you have that uh, you know you get from all sorts of things that you buy. You get that styrofoam, and it seems like a shame to throw it into the landfill. Well, this is another use for it. Um, what I do is I break it into chunks, and that's how I make the bottom part of the pot lighter. Let me just do a couple more here. You know, I like to break it into you know reasonable sized chunks. I don't want it too small because then it will pack together and the uh, you know it'll keep the water from draining out. So you can see it's kind of loose and light. Now normally I would do maybe twice that much, okay? But if it turns out I don't have that much styrofoam or I don't have styrofoam at all, I, I sometimes use um, cypress mulch. Cypress mulch is lighter than bark mulch and it doesn't seem to decompose as fast. So I'm just going to put in this one, I'm going to put half styrofoam, half cypress mulch. And I want probably a third of the bucket, maybe, to be filled with this lighter material. And, you know, depending upon what you're growing, if the roots are really shallow, sometimes I fill the thing almost two-thirds full with styrofoam and mulch, and then just have the top part like that soil, depending upon what I'm growing in the bucket. <coughs> All righty. And next, well, didn't actually have to do that. I had one right here ready. Okay, so next, I put that out of the way. Oh yeah, and by the way, I wanted to tell you this hat, cotton, 
It's a, a Scala hat. S-C-A-L-A. -A. You can buy them online. And uh, it's all cotton. The brim is sewed up this way, so it stays that way. I like it because it's light on my head. It doesn't make my head sweat as much as some hats. And I can wash it. And when I wash it, I just set it on something like a, you know, a, a big bottle or something like that, or an upside down bowl, and shape it and let it dry. I don't dry it in the dryer. I wash it in the washing machine, shape it, let it dry, and then it's fine to put on. And uh, if it starts to get limp, I put a little bit of um, spray starch on it before I shape it and let, let it dry that way. So it's a great hat. Okay, so <clears throat> drill the holes, styrofoam, cypress mulch, then uh, usually I do compost and a mix of soils and uh, organic fertilizer, but for brevity and because I didn't feel like doing this near the compost pit in the sun, I'm going to use just a, a good garden soil. I spread that around in there. And when I'm first planting plants, I always, uh, pretty much, well, I won't say always because I'm not that consistent, but I'm pretty consistent. I usually put um, organic fertilizer mixed in with the soil when I'm first planting something. And, you know, I use, you know, it, it really depends. Like this, that was a cup. I was going to use just a little bit more. It's quite a big container. And a little more soil. It's amazing how much soil one of these things can, can hold. Okay, mix that in pretty good. Make a little spot for the, uh, oh yeah. And I'm doing this on the plastic here on the hard top. I don't usually, I don't usually pot things and stuff like that on this because then I end up having to sweep it up and stuff. I usually do it out on the grass. I've already watered this. And usually when transplanting stuff, I water, I'll water where I'm planting it. I'll water the plant itself, then move it. And that way it has the best chance of um, you know, not being shocked. I'm going to try to take the whole thing out here. This is a lemon basil and it has a very small, I think it looks like a bush basil growing next to it, but it definitely needs more room <coughs> than the pot it's in. So I'm trying to loosen it up a bit, see if I can get it out here without damaging it. I should have got it out pre- there we go, okay. Would have been nice if I had pre uh, done that. So now this, see this one has one of those cloth things at the bottom, and it has a little mulch too, which I think I'm going to take off the plant. There's a little mulch in the bottom of this, so I'm taking that off. I don't really want that here, I just want it in the bottom of the pot. I used to use bark mulch, but I found that bark mulch is kind of, uh, I don't know, it seems like I've had a lot of problems with fungus from using bark mulch, so I'm, I think I might be giving that up. All right, so now I want to set that kind of nice in the middle. Like that. Anyways, I'm going to fill it in, the rest of the dirt, pat it down nice, give it a really good watering, and then place it out in the garden wherever it is that I want to put it. So that's uh, that's it. Let me review that. The uh, anything that doesn't have holes, you know. So ceramic, if it doesn't have holes, you really can't use that outside. It'll uh, collect water and breed mosquitoes. So anyway, plastic. Drill the holes first. Put some sort of a little barrier to keep the soil from coming out the holes. If you want it to be lightweight, break up some styrofoam in the bottom, or and or you can use both cypress mulch and the styrofoam then the soil and if you make sure you give them a little organic fertilizer or use a little compost from your garden your compost garden uh, your plants will just grow like crazy well that's it from your urban amateur garden mo 
in, from Houston, Texas, USA. If you want to learn more about me, go visit my website, Expanding Heart, www.expandingheart.com. Happy gardening!